Like many, the promise of the new Insomniac open world Spider-Man game gave me an itch for wall crawling I felt I had to scratch. And so, against the better judgment of Metacritic and top 10 Spider-Man game lists everywhere, a few months ago I picked myself up a copy of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 on PS4, and I haven't looked back since. I hadn't played a Spider-Man game since the days of PS1, and boy was I surprised, this game was incredible. Underneath its horrible, uncanny valley cutscenes, with their laughable facial animations and a mostly barren open world, there was a group of people trying to make a truly great game, with its Mass Effect style dialogue trees, straight from Arkham Asylum combat, and an extensive rogues gallery aided by excellent voice work with weird jerky gestures of Spider-Man somehow working perfectly as a callback to the strangeness of Ditko. I loved this game and the story it was trying to tell. From the strained father-son relationship between Craven and Peter, to the psychotic murder mystery of Carnage, and of course the lovingly crafted web-slinging traversal. Beanox swang for the fences and crafted a story freed from the narrow confines of its mediocre namesake. And the black suit, my god does it look good in this game. I don't care if it was relegated to a pre-order bonus or that I spent an extra $2.99 on a critically panned, fan-hated, still $40 game, just look at this thing. The game starts with Spider-Man's iconic origin done rather well, like some sort of strange Grand Theft Auto 4 mission time forgot. As Peter walks through a dingy New York with quippy pedestrians, walking past a corner store thief on his way to tragedy, he steps out onto the street and hears the gunshot that brings his world crashing down around him. Not a bad way to start a game. Cut to two years later and we find Spider-Man still brooding on the death of his uncle, riddled with guilt and looking for payback. His rather fractured and sometimes incongruent quest leads him across the path of the Kill Crazy Carnage, a seemingly mentoring Craven the Hunter, an always manipulative Kingpin, and a rather well done Black Cat, all the way to the kinetic battles against the Green Goblin and Electro. The developers basically told The Amazing Spider-Man 2's mediocre story to go to hell and built their own story around Peter's search for vengeance. I'd be lying if I said all of it works, but the beats that land make me forget all the hate for this game and really see the love with which this game was created. The realization of Craven that he's coming to the end of his life with no progeny to keep his legacy going, Kingpin and Peter's excellent tete-a-tete -tete at a swanky social gathering, and the rage of a helplessly dying Harry Osborn all connect. Underneath it's straight from Arkham Asylum combat, with some awesomely stylish finishing moves, and an open world deader than Grand Theft Auto 3, this feels like a true video game throwback from the days of yore, before The Last of Us, before Journey, before games as art. A bad tie-in game with its developers racing against the clock to make something more make it their own. Rushed out too fast to meet its movie counterpart's release date, this game has flashes of glory that set my hair on end. It's a beautiful mess, and if not for Insomniac, a game I'm sure I'd keep returning to again and again, just to feel the rush of sprinting down the side of a skyscraper, leaping off as I plummet as close to the ground as I can before swinging high into the air, for the two truly epic boss battles sandwiched in between the other rather mundane fare. I defy anyone to play the boss battle against Electro and not feel thrilled to the core in a way only the best of video games can provide. Weaving in and out of buildings as Electro turns the game into some kind of mad bullet hell shooter. Spider-Man and his foe plummeting to the earth as they beat the hell out of each other. It's everything Zack Snyder ever wanted to make an audience feel. And then there's the Spider Slayer. Spider Slayer, my god is this thing scary. There are robots in the world that randomly appear to track you. 
Fail to shoot them down, and you'll be confronted by the laser shooting machine from hell. Fast, deadly, and seemingly invincible, fighting the spider slayers is exhilarating. This is what video games can do. Part bullet hell, part bionic commando, this is the amazing Spider-Man 2 operating at the peak of its powers. This robot is truly frightening as it comes after you, and it's absolutely relentless. I'm sure there is a way to beat it, but I've never managed to figure it out, not daring to look online. It looms over my playthroughs like some dark lord never to be conquered, and it's yet another thing that keeps me coming back to this game. Before they were art, video games were the stuff of B-movies and grindhouse cinema. Crazy, nitro-charged messes made by people who couldn't believe someone actually gave them the keys and told them to drive. Someday there'll be a game maker who plays on these tropes and style, and he'll be lauded as the Tarantino of video games. Until then, we have gems like The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I love The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I don't care who knows it. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to like and subscribe. I make new content every Friday. Thank you.